Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a new keyboard from a company that's only been around for a while but it's already made a big splash. Um, I previously reviewed the High 75, a 75% with a knob that, I mean I think at its lowest price was around $50, $60 and it sounds amazing, uh, just stock. Um, it was one of the first aluminum kits that use the pet mod if i'm not mistaken uh, the plastic layer um, since then they've released the high 75 and a few other ones but i reached out to them uh i want to say last month and um was like hey i'd like to review some more of your products and they're like all right we just released this k81 it's a um 75 as well but this is a classic one so i'm like oh yeah let's uh let's see so they sent me out this keyboard in order for me to take a look at it 75 percent three mode with a knob and i do believe it's uh it's semi-translucent i <laughs> i've been working through uh some technical issues uh, winter kind of was a little harder this year and we went through several days almost a week without power but everything's back to normal so i've kind of gotten a few keyboards mixed up in my head but anyway this leo bog was sent out to me in the mint sea salt color um, i want to say there's four different colors but i'll get to that in the spec section and i am very curious to see because like I said, I, I reviewed the Leo Bog that was sent out to me by... I reviewed the Leo Bog High 75, like I said, not too long ago. And that definitely impressed me. It's a keyboard that has been going through my daily driver cycle. So let's see if this one is going to be another one that makes it to that. So first things first, let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got. All right, so in the box we have a nice uh, user card. Congratulations on becoming a valued Leo Bog K81 user. And we have this handy-dandy guide that shows us the function controls uh, for Bluetooth 5. They have three, so total of uh, five, five devices wired, one 2.4 and three Bluetooth. Um, and it looks like it does, oh yeah, it does have a pocket in the back for the USB-C 2.4 dongle all right let's set this aside let's see what we have in the box of goodies coiled usb a to usb c cable i'm a big fan of uh coiled uh usb cables because back in the day pretty much all keyboard cables uh came like this and uh, actually reminds me of the old corded phones as well um so this one is a pretty decent one with a magnet um so it's a pretty decent one. It's not quite that long, but I guess with the coil, it'll stretch out. Looks like we have some spare switches, which I always appreciate. Um, nothing like having a couple extra switches because, you know, sometimes things happen. A pin can get so bent up it doesn't work anymore, or you changing switches and you lose one, or any number of things that could happen. So having a few extra switches in the box in my opinion, is a big plus. Um, now, this one is a Leo Bog, of course. Oh, it's a tactile. It's a medium tactile. Doesn't have any ping. It has a nice, um, has a bit of pre-travel before the bump, just a tiny bit. So it's like a little D, but that bump is definitely in the medium range. I wouldn't say heavy, but it might be leaning that way. And the spring weight, I would guess, is around 50, maybe 55 grams. It feels very similar to a black, so to an actual black. So we got four spare switches for 75%. That is great. Put these back in the bag so I don't lose them. Okay, we have these. Uh, I would guess they're feet, but I'm not quite sure. I guess we'll find out shortly. They're just... Um, some semi-translucent uh, rubber caps. I don't know if they're feet. Oh, I guess we will find out. Of course, we have a branded Leo Bog switch puller. Um, ah, this one actually feels nice. Sometimes these are like 
you just press on them and they bend. But this one actually has some, uh, feels a little bit stronger. Um, I like them when they're uh, branded so that I can you know, remember, okay, this one. Because, I mean, it's little things that, that are included. I, I mean, obviously the keyboard has to be nice. You can't just include a whole bunch of great accessories and you know put in a bad keyboard. But usually, not a long ways, but usually in my experience, if you put in good accessories, you're probably going to be getting a good keyboard as well because there's been a lot of thought put into it. All right, and another thing that uh, keyboard manufacturers have been doing um, primarily on pre-built so though ex for one exception that would be mons geek and Akko, even on bare bones now they're including uh these and i can't stress enough how much i think these are important um we have dust in the air we have so many different things just floating around um keeping this on the keyboard when we're not using it is going to just create a more sanitary environment um i have seen some crazy keyboards that have been brought to me. Hey man, can you fix this? And I'll take off the keys and it's li literally, there's stuff growing underneath there. There's, <laughs> I think I shared one of the pictures of one of the keyboards I took one time and it was like, I mean, people were like, why did you share this? I'm gonna have nightmares. Cause it was literally, I don't know if it was fungus, moss. I don't know what was growing. I was honestly surprised that the keyboard actually even worked. <laughs> But whenever you can, especially, uh, you know, if you work in an office or you have a home office, you know, you take the weekends off, the evenings, just popping this on and going away, the keyboard's going to be a lot cleaner and it's probably going to last longer. So just, just another tip from your Uncle Mark. We also have a nice little manual and yes, we have it in both languages. Good. One thing that I just noticed... S-O-A-I, or S-U-O-A-I. This is the same company that makes Ala. So I think I had read that at some point, but this actually confirms it for me because I actually have uh, received keyboard from Ala. I don't think they have the same offices, but it looks like they're owned by the same company because I know that I deal with different people at each of the companies and you know they have their emails at the domain so uh that's because yeah i believe the ala f87 came with leo bog graywood switches that's another thing leo bog has been putting out a, a few pretty good switches and um, i'm actually interested in this black tactile switch that kind of has the weight of a say a gatoron black but it's tactile and it has a nice bump it's anything that's more than a brown a drunk linear is is a good tactile for me though i really prefer heavy so we have a nice nicely laid out and we actually have a user warranty card this is something you do not see that often but this tells me that as long as you take care of your keyboard and if something happens they are more likely than not going to honor their warranty and that is a huge plus i mean don't get me wrong, I love the Zoya GMK keyboards, but I, knock on wood, have not had one break yet. But if one did, I don't think that I would be getting any warranty. Now, I haven't tried, so I can't say, but, I mean, it's been difficult to even just get a hold of them to get drivers. So if I was like, hey, I have a problem with a keyboard. I mean, I've, I've asked them for drivers, and they send me a link to a new keyboard they have listed. I'm like, uh, that's a nice keyboard, thanks, but can I get the drivers for this keyboard that I bought for me? So having this, this is a huge plus because not only does it say that they're building a product they believe is going to outlast the warranty, they're telling you that, hey, something happens along the way, we'll go ahead and either fix it or replace it for you, as long as it's not user fault. So that is, that's worth a lot in my book, I, I say personally. And here we are with the Leo Bog K81 in the sea salt mint theme or colorway. Um, very similar knob that has the insert like the uh, high 75 that I reviewed. These are a little bit different, um, but you can get inserts to replace these. And, and we can see what these feet are for. All right, do these come out or do these just go over them? 
Oh, they just go over. Never mind. My mis I thought you'd replace it. That's actually much easier. And they actually stick. Huh. Well, I gotta say, I mean, I'm usually a fan of flip out feet, but if you've ever had one break, then maybe your opinion changes. But having this is nice, although it'd be nice if there was somewhere to stash it. <laughs> although I just don't see where they could be stashed. So looking at this keyboard, I, I love the transparency of it. This badge feels like aluminum. Um, I love how we can see the ribbon cable. Uh, looks like a probably a silicone rubber mat down there below. We have the pocket for the USB-C receiver and thank goodness they have their logo on it. I, I have a box full of dongles. Do they go to mice? Do they go to a keyboard? What do they go to? I don't know. They're just black. <laughs> so this will allow me to, minim you know, to if I were to find this laying on the floor, I'm going to quickly be able to say, all right, it either goes to one of the three Leo boxes that I own and boom, I don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, it's just going to go in my box and be like, well, the next time I pull out a keyboard and it's missing the dongle, I can start going through the box and testing each and every one, which isn't fun. So I've actually thought of like just making a whole bunch of little stickers with all the different brands and just sticking them on there, but stickers can't come off. Um, I almost want to brand them. <laughs> but I've got to say, I don't know if this is acrylic, but this is a very solid keyboard. I mean... I cannot get this to bend at all. I mean, it's it's quite substantial. It feels a lot heavier and stronger than one would assume just by looking at it. I mean, it's it's hefty. It's got some some weight to it. Now we have these keys that are. Oh. All right, so it's not acrylic. This is a PC case. It, it honestly it doesn't feel like it. I'm just, my impression of PC is just that it's soft, clear plastic. And this is, there's nothing soft about this. This is solid hunk of keyboard. Um, all right, so that's a poron plate foam. Oh no, that's the plate foam. So it's got poron plate foam and PET for the sound dampening and well, popping. It has a 3,000 milliamp hour battery, and of course it has NKRO. But one thing that I noticed, when I saw these, I thought that these were switches for the... Now, granted, of course, we could use those switches, but these are linear switches that we have in here, and they're clear switches, which makes a lot more sense on a clear keyboard. So it looks like we have a north-facing PCB. We can feel the plastic layer between the PCB and the IXPE foam. The switch is a nice linear, light linear, I would say 35, 40 grams force probably, five pin, and almost completely transparent, except for that uh, dustproof milky stem. Hmm. Has a nice poppy sound and the it reminds me kind of of a Speed Silver or a CS Silver. Um, but that is actually quite nice. Now, so yeah, this is available in a pink colorway called Pink Bunny, in a mint colorway called Mint Salt, in a black colorway called Star Traveler. Ooh, I like that and in a Morse code colorway, which is primarily white with some blue. These are actually some interesting keycaps. I mean, I'm looking at this and this is actually, it, it, it's like a PET layer above the PC cap. Oh, these are actually really strong. I've come across some of these PC caps that are actually too thin, but this, this is uh, it's nice. Let's see if we're at zero. 
1.5 millimeters. That's probably why it sounded better than I expected. That is definitely a good um, thickness for the body of the keycaps. It looks like a double shot layer because I can see both the white and the green that's sitting on the top. That's quite interesting. These are honestly interesting keycaps. Um, I like that they have the big font. Um, legends for me, I like them big. I, when they're up in the corner, I'm like, what are you guys scared? You got all this key space there and you're just hiding up in the corner in a little thing. I don't know, that's just me. But the way that this is laid out, honestly, for most people, this is gonna be great. Delete and insert right where I want it and the insert is underneath the delete. Thank you. Home with end underneath it, page up, page down. This is the perfect navigation column in my opinion and I wish more manufacturers would kind of start sticking to a standardization when it comes to how these uh, uh, are mapped now the print screen being over here and the multimedia keys even though we have a knob but that's just minor let's check out the stabilizers huh Oh, well, look at there. I think, what keyboard am I thinking about that had a different switch for the space bar? Yeah, and it's just the space bar. Usually they put a, um, a linear for the space bar so, you know, people don't mistake that for ticking. But, hmm. Now, looking at these... Those stabilizers have the most minimal of lubrication. I mean, it's hardly even visible. It has like a skin of lubrication, but these are definitely very well attached. And when I'm moving, I'm actually moving the entire keyboard. The tolerances on those stabilizers are perfect. And then, oh, then we have a little peek out of that. Pour on, and then this is also a very nice thing to see. I know a lot of people will be like, Oh, those that's just a normal standard thing. I've dealt with a lot of keyboards that don't have this. This means that somebody checked it and it actually provides you, uh, you know, the past quality control, and it did so in the fourth month of 2023. So it has a date. It has uh, the fact that somebody actually checked it. And I like that it's actually underneath a key. So it's like, hey, <laughs> somebody probably hand assembled the last parts of this or at least putting in the switches or, or the keycaps, although I know there's machines to do it. But if not, then somebody inspected it to make sure that everything was working. It does sound nice with that tactile, actually. And it's not loud like you'd expect it to be with a polycarbonate keycap. Let's see about taking out the stabilizer and getting a closer look at one. There is just the tiniest amount of lube on there. It's hardly visible. But... They seem fine. Stabilizers, they're really, they have improved over the last two years. I've seen stabilizers go from, oh, those have to be replaced or I have to, you know, holy mod it, plumber's mod it, something. I haven't had to do a plumber's mod in quite a while because these stabilizers are just getting better and better. Now, this one might look like one of the cheaper ones. I usually wasn't a fan of the milky ones, but with the tiniest amount of lube, it sounds perfect. Now, I did not expect, and I am correct, that it would have any um, support for screw-in stabilizers on the PCB, but that's no big deal, especially in the fact that, I mean, these things are pretty rock solid. The amount of give, per se, is minimal. Um, 
I'm actually quite impressed. I gotta say, I um, I did have high expectations for this because of my experience with Leo Bog and Alla. They, I've been very happy with the keyboards I reviewed from them so far. They came out of the gate um, 100 meters ahead of everybody else. They really, they did their research, and you can tell by the products. I mean, this is a, it's an interesting design. Looks like the battery is right there. We can see it. I definitely look forward to coming back to this at a later date and opening it up. Though I, I'm going to assume this is probably one of those keyboards they don't want you to open up, but that's what I like to do. But today we're just sticking to the stock experience. So, so it looks like we have two different angles of typing because this, these don't come off. But I do like these big round rubber feet. They actually feel a lot sturdier. Um, cat hair. I gotta say, I am out of transparent keyboards. I've only reviewed, reviewed a handful of them. This one has definitely just jumped to the top of the list uh, because there's a lot of things about it that I really like. I like how substantial it feels and how strong it is. I mean, I'm, it doesn't want to do anything. It's not giving it. It's like, hey, are we supposed to flex? Nope. Okay, don't flex. But are we gasket mounted? Yes, we are. And it actually has a pretty good amount of flex. I'm barely pressing down. And yeah, that's a, that's a nice amount of flex. As you can see, there's the daughter board. I'm actually trying to see where it opens up. This might actually be a interesting little uh, feat just to get in here. <laughs> but we're gonna save that for another day. Um, I gotta say, this is nice, but hey, Let's see what it looks like. The light's turned on. All right. Plug it in. We are in USB mode. Woo! Look at that. Look at those lights. Oh, that's one thing. I mean, I've gone from RGB is okay. I could take it or leave it to... If you're going to do it, do it right. Or just don't do it at all. But at least put a caps lock indicator light. But when you do it, do it right and this is right i mean granted you know it's coming through nice and um oh, looks like i'm gonna have to read the manual and see what that means oh, that might mean that oh yeah wired mode and i'm in windows all right so it's telling me all right there's the light modes you hit the function key it's lighting up now, let me turn you can see the windows and the four light up. So it gives you the mode. We may not have a screen, but we can see what mode we're in. So it looks like we have not only an Android mode, we have a Windows mode, we have a Mac mode, and we have an iOS mode. That's new to me. Usually it's just Windows and Mac. I've seen a couple with iOS. I don't think I've seen one with Android, and I wonder how that works but I don't know where my tablet is at the moment. <laughs> um, so these lights, especially because of the uh, clear case, um, I don't know if we're getting a full. Let me turn down my studio lights and see if we can get a real good look at this. So um, here's my partner in crime. Of the void himself, the one that leaves all his hairs behind. He does. When I'm sleeping, he gets up on, on this desk, and if he's mad at me, he knocks stuff over. <laughs> Aren't cats just the best? <laughs> I gotta say, this is a this is a nice light show. And I out of the translucent transparent keyboards I've seen most of the time the entire key is translucent with just a little bit of a legend and once you turn the lights on it's nearly impossible to see the legends here we have the best of both worlds I can still see the legends 
and I get a nice light show. Just the specs. Today we're taking a look at the Leo Bog K81. This is a polycarbonate 81 key, three mode, 75% with a knob. It comes preloaded with Leo Bog ice crystal linear switches, which have 35 grams of force, 3.7 millimeter total travel, and a 48 gram bottom out. It is a gasket mounted PC plate with north facing hot swappable PCB and comes in a very sturdy polycarbonate case. This keyboard is available in a pink, mint, a star black, and a white and blue Morse. This keyboard MSRPs for $119. It is preloaded with a 3000 milliamp hour battery, comes weighing in at 1080 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 20 millimeters above the typing surface and the back sits at 34 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of eight degrees. Adding the included pop-on feet, will raise the back up to 39 millimeters, changing your angle of typing to 11 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $119. So I gotta say, uh, I can comfortably say that of all, all the transparent um, keyboards that I've reviewed, this one is top of all of them. Not only in sound, but in the sturdiness of the case, the features, um, the, the way the keycaps are done, the way the RGB is done, the way the design is overall. I enjoy this keyboard. I'm, I'm usually not the biggest fan of translucent keyboards, though I, I, I actually did take one of my phones one time and scraped off the back glass. I mean, went through the whole process so that I could see the actual back, and I like that. So being able to see some of the electronics below and the way that it's constructed, I like it in this one and other transparent ones it's like they try to hide it but i think that in my case anyway it, it attracts me to it it almost gives it a steampunk type vibe or i don't know it's it, it seems more techno technologically adapt because i can see the inner working so that's very cool but the way that it sounds the way that it feels the gasket mounting the way they did the keycaps some may not like it and Obviously, if you're in a completely dark room, it's going to be hard to see um, the legends on here. But I don't usually work in a completely dark room. I at least have the light from the monitor. So I've never really been in a situation where I need the backlighting to be able to see. It, 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 those cases, it's usually, you know, if I'm on my laptop and I'm in a room, like maybe people are watching we're all watching movies as a family night or something and I pick up my laptop to answer an email or something then I have backlight on that and that works great because I'm already in a dark environment and the movie is probably not going to be enough to keep my keyboard lit especially with the, the screen blocking the light so in my situation I'm never in enough darkness but for some people they might actually want you know some of that light to shine through but again the way that I've seen it done in other keyboards in my opinion, this is the best implementation. I actually thought this was a sticker at first, but it does look to be almost like a double shot top. Um, that's, I don't know how it's been integrated into it, but I'm curious to find out. I love the um, the nav navigation column. I think that they've set up the keys exactly as the majority of people want. For me, especially having the insert and the delete underneath, or the insert underneath the delete is key for me as I do a lot of command line interface work and insert is used for a lot of different things. So this keyboard is definitely keeping in line with the Leo Boggs and the Alas that I have reviewed so far. And I am I'm completely satisfied. Like I said, I'm gonna add this to my rotation of daily drivers because I like it. It's just really nice and it sounds and feels great to type on um i will be coming back to it though because i'm i gotta gotta be honest with you i'm very curious 
how this thing is put together because I don't see any screws that are easily accessible. So I'm probably going to have to take up all the keycaps and maybe even lift up. It looks like I probably will have to lift up some of that, um, the, the PC, the plate pad to be able to get to the screw heads. But it should be an interesting disassembly. And not that it needs any mods, but I don't know. I might do some. Um, because, you know, once it's opened up, <laughs> anything goes. I really like these feet, though. My only concern is that they could get lost quite easily. And if they're lost, that's it. So it's either having flip-out feet and worrying about them breaking or having feet that you have, but you don't know where they went. So, um, but they do seem to stay on there pretty good. So if you have a particular angle of typing, either with them on or off, then you can just store them somewhere or keep them on the keyboard, depending on the situation. Anyway, um, if you guys have any questions about this keyboard, um, anything that you'd like to see me take a look at when I come back to it, which I will be taking a look at the software and everything uh, to see the customization, please let me know down in the comments below. I do my best to answer each and every comment. And let's get a conversation going. I'm going to leave you guys now with the stock sound test of the Leo Bong K81 3 mode 75% with a knob. And I do hope that you guys enjoy. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.